Nate checks the Criteria Collection for your guy here. Sorry, just battling a bunch of ghosts with my Sword of Doom. Which just so happens to be the name of the title of the movie. We've got number 280, Kihachi Okamoto's The Sword of Doom, Diabo, Sa Diabo Satsu Toje. Oh, man. What an intense little movie we have for you right now. It's uh, 1965, 121 minutes, Japanese. But not much to say. Um, it's basically just a, a samurai movie. It's about this this guy. Um, his name Ryu Ryo Ryu no Ryo no Suke. Um, let me get his full name. Do, do I have the book? Yeah. Let's see. What's what's this guy's real name? Ryu Ryu no Ryu no Suke Suke Sukue. Uh, played by Tatsuya Nakadi. I should have practiced these, but anyway. Anyway, so this guy's got this, he's he's basically this really intense samurai kind of guy, this assassin. Just killing her, just killing her, just kills a bunch of people with no, like, emotion. He's got this, like, really dead face, and just, like, like, he, 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 like, he looked like he got a little something touched up in the head and all that. And so, <clears throat> so he, like, he battles all these people and just knocks them out. And then he ends up um, running away from his village when he finds out that what he when he ends up killing this guy, like this match and like this I'm not saying like he he persuades his like he has sex with his opponent's wife to like you know get her to, to, to throw the match or something I don't I don't know but but anyway they get divorced and so he, like it becomes an actual like like rivalry like an actual duel and not just like a fight. And Ryunosuke Ryu, Ryu no, Ryu, Ryu no, Ryu no kills him and dashes. And um, he actually takes and his um, and the wife actually runs away with him. And they have a baby together later. And yeah, so anyway, so he's uh, so he ends up um, meeting this this uh, this other master swordsman played by guess who? Guess who? Wait, is there a photo of him? Is there, can I show a photo of him? There he is! There he is! Don't show the photo! Oh my god! It's Don't show the photo! Not, and it's so weird to see Toshiro Mifune in a non Kurosawa movie. It's a trip and a half. And he, he feels, he feels like he's sort of out of place just because, like, I think like he's just so it's so his part is so dialogue heavy. I feel like Kurosawa really used him more for like just his expressions, I mean and all that. But here it's like Kuros I mean he got him because it was a name. He probably um, Okamoto got him because he was a name and just said okay here read these lines you know. A lot of the I mean if there's any expression in this movie it's from you know, Naka Nakadai's character and. Uh, I mean, this dead face, you know, just, that's, that's the guy who really gives any kind of expression. And so, so anyway, so he's gonna, go, so, Ryunosuke goes to, um, kill this, uh, so, he's going to kill the, um, the, uh, the brother of the, the guy he killed, because, um, the brother is looking for him for revenge, um, and as he's about to kill him, <clears throat> I guess he, he loses his, he loses his self because he tries to kill the swordsman, the Mifuni's character, and uh, like he can't do it. Like he botches the assassination, and it's like after that night, his face is like like he, his face begins to break. It's like like we see him back um, back at his house with his with the with the his mistress, and he's like he's like stunned. He's like I can't believe what 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 what, what you know. And so he basically goes crazy. Well, the, his wife goes crazy. Well, not his wife. The 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 ex the wife goes crazy, and ends up trying to kill him because he he's still gonna go kill because he vows to kill the brother. He vows to kill Mufuni's character, whose name is uh, Toranu Toranusuke Shimada. And so vows to kill them, <clears throat> and. Uh, and so the wife, the, the, the mistress is like sick, and so she tries to kill him in his sleep. He wakes up and kills her outside. And so at the end of the movie, it's basically just him, you know, 
him he, the final scene like he, he he sees all these you know these ghosts of all the people that he uh he killed and um and he finally he finally loses his shit when he realizes that um when this uh this girl that we've seen throughout the movie and um uh the what are they called it Oiran I think um she's she meets with um Ryus Ryo Nosuke when he finds out that she is the granddaughter of this pilgrim that he killed at the be very beginning of the movie, he just basically loses his shit and begins to just tear up the whole house. And all his assassins, all his um, assassins come in and it just becomes this like huge blood, just this blood fest where he just, just tears apart everyone. And the movie ends on a still frame of him like just, you know, in... Ah, you know, this attacking mode. And apparently, <clears throat> and I think it says it somewhere here. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, so apparently the movie, um, the movie was supposed to be, was, I mean, the movie's based on a book that was, um, like, part, like, like a trilogy or, like, inst like a bunch of installations. And so there was apparently supposed to be a sequel to this, which is why the movie ends so abruptly and just shows him basically killing everyone, you know. And, you know, the whole idea of the, you know, the granddaughter, basically, you know, him going crazy over the granddaughter, you know, it's never really explained. Um, but apparently, yeah, I guess the, the sequels were never made. Kind of a similar thing, I guess, kind of a similar situation that um, Suzuki was put in when... Uh, he couldn't do the sequel, he didn't do the sequels to Fighting Elegy. So, <clears throat> so yeah, but I mean, so that's kind of a, kind of a disappointing, like, ending, but at the same time, I mean, that, that last scene, that last final battle is so bloody and complex and just intense that you kind of forgive it, just because you, I mean, you just, you just have to try and look at it, you know, as the descent, this man just descending into madness. Basically, he is a warrior. He is a crazed warrior who basically can no longer stand it. Who has tried to keep his calm. Um, who kills without emotion, but finally kills with emotion at the very end. And uh, just it just so happens that his emotion is very violent and you know explosive. And honestly, that's all I can that's all I can say about this movie. It's pretty very very intense, um, and uh, and I kind of want to get it again, get it just for that final scene, just to see it. But um, the rest of the plot is really confusing. Um, but again, not another reason to get it myself. Um, and of course, Mufuni's in it, so I dig I dig Mufuni, even though this might not be his greatest role. You know, he definitely definitely had his masterpieces with Kurosawa. But, um, still, not a bad movie. Uh, like I said, really com com complex plot. But the final scene, dude. Anyway. Uh, we'll give it a, give it a B plus. Not a bad movie. B plus. Not the greatest movie ever. But Okam Okamoto, <clears throat> it's not a bad film. Um, this is our first Okamoto. We've got, I think, two more. Um, one called Kill, with an exclamation point. I guess it's called Kill! And then, um... And then uh, one of the he directed one of the Zatochi Blind Swordsman movies too, which we'll see season seven number oh god number six hundred and seventy whatever. I still don't know what I'm gonna do for that set that whole like a whole week of um, Criterion sets or whatever. So anyway, um, Sword of Doom B plus cool movie no supplements and that is that. So number two eighty. We are four four fifths of the way done. We are almost done. We've only got twenty more movies, or technically, technically nineteen more movies, because next is Jewels and Gem, and then at two eighty two is the three war films placeholder. Then we got the Generation Canal, Ashes and Diamonds. So, but anyway, yeah. So that'll be next week. But tomorrow we're going back. We're going back. We are going all the way back. Almost all the way back. Number three, the lady van. Number three, Alfred Hitchcock's *The Lady Vanishes*. One more time for the people. Well, one more time because, as you know, the if you go back and watch the video for some reason, the 
sound mutes after the first like seven seconds or so and I haven't been able to figure I don't know why it does that so rather than you know I have to do it all over again and hopefully you know I, I think it was my old camera the camera I was working on I think or just the the way the camera was set up so <clears throat> hopefully this I think the new app that I'm using works a little bit better so yeah so look forward to that tomorrow we're gonna go back and then Sunday we're going Going back, but not as far back. We got brother, brother Bergman, number eleven, the seventh seal, and uh, this one won't take the place of the original review, but it will be just a re rewatch. This one is supposed to take the replace because this is a technical error. This is me trying to give it a better rating. Same thing as I'll be doing with Andre Rublev whenever the hell I get to that one. So anyway, that's for me. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't go crazy and kill ghosts. I don't know. And uh, don't sleep with your opponent's uh, wives to trick people in the throwing matches or whatever. And uh, yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for The Lady Vanishes re rewatching time. And until then, goodbye.